Hey Flosstube, it's Jean of Monticello Stitches and happy Memorial Day 2022. And it's the beginning of summer. Hope you all are gonna have a great summer. It's getting hot in Georgia and uh, be a good time to sit inside in the air conditioning and stitch something. I wanted to share with you my different projects I have going on. Some are um, for uh, my company Monticello stitches and then some are just things that I just needed a break to do but first I'll give you a quick sneak peek of one of the things I'm working on for uh, Needlework Expo in August I, th I think I'm gonna have four new offerings and I will show them to you in August but in the meantime I'll just give you a quick um, peek sneak peek I'm really trying to limit my color palette because in the past I've just had oodles of colors and let's face it you can sp spend a lot of money doing cross stitch and um, I'm really trying to keep costs down for everybody and I use DMC floss most of the time so this is just a peek of one of what I'm working on right now uh, most of my things are influenced by samplers of the past and this one is so you can see I'm just kind of limiting it to uh, pink, red, green, and then a couple of shades of green and a charcoal. So, hopefully I'll have this done and framed and I can show it to you uh, closer to August so you can have a look and buy it. Yippee! <laughs> Thanks. But in the meantime, I really uh, wanted to do some other things. A friend asked me to try to make a pillow that he liked and so I really had a big time with that and I'm almost done I have to just add a little more trim to it but I wanted to show you how it came out I'm really happy with how it came out um, this is done on number oh, well, 10 counts to the inch mono canvas that I think I ordered off Amazon and then um, I drew my pattern on a piece of parchment paper and traced it onto the canvas and then my design he really wanted a big bigger pillow so I didn't have enough this part was only like 10 and a half inches so I needed to go out so I added this border and my dear friend loves fabric everything like I do she had this wonderful um, upholstery fabric so she she gave that to me and today I'm adding the the braid as you can see and I, I'm almost through I've got to go this is the th third full side I've got to add it here I'm just sewing it on my hand and then pull it back to here and make these guys meet in a somewhat pleasing manner to me that's the hardest part you want it to look like hopefully that like that's there's no bump there seam I, I don't always get that worked out well enough but anyway so I'm almost done and this was about um, five weeks of work maybe less but I enjoyed it so much I ordered my wool floss off the internet from Elizabeth Bradley it was really like stitching like butter I was real happy but um, I'm a knitter too and I have so much uh, uh, yarn I have a ton of DK yarn and I think that might be the best I'm gonna try worsted too, but I have a ton of DK wool that I'm gonna try. I think that would work great. And I bought a ton of it from Knit Picks. And gosh, their stuff is very, very reasonably priced. So one 10 yard, um, let's see one handy, one 10 yard little skein of the Elizabeth Bradley off their site was like $2.50 but uh, a whole um, skein of, of double DK yarn from Knit Picks, their Peruvian wool is, I don't know, a couple of dollars. So I'm gonna do that. I've, I've got another thing I'm about to trace off. So what I do is I, I'm gonna take a pillow of my inspiration and um, print it. In black and white and with a sharpie pen I'll outline it and then I'll blow that up on my little computer and 
put it down on a table and lay the tin mesh canvas over it and you can see through it. So you just trace through there. So anyway, I don't know if I'm gonna get excited enough to do Monticello stitches in needlepoint too, but maybe I just really am happy with how this came out and I think my friend will be happy too. So that'll be great. So that was one distraction and I'm all about distractions. So I got that done. Another thing I had started um, is a Hands Across the Sea sampler. I think it's called Memories of the Past. I stuck a picture of it in the last video. I'll stick another picture of it in here. I was watching Floss Tube by the Attic Needleworks, those gals who are so fun and nice. And, and um, we all have seen SALs offered here and there, stitch alongs. Uh, and they called them start alongs, which is really more suited to what I do. I'll start them now, whether I'll finish them or not. But I thought maybe you'd like to stitch memories of the past with me as I make some progress. Um, I'll show, share with you how much I've done. This is on 40 count, I think. It may be even smaller than 40 count. I have always worked on 32 count, and I'm very comfortable with that. 40 and smaller uh, count, higher higher count, but smaller weave uh, is a little more challenging for my eyesight, but I'm, I'm trying. But I'll show you how much I have so far. It's gonna be beautiful. And I've made a mistake. I've got to take this whole bluish, greenish little border out, because it's wrong. It's It should be a, a couple of rows more. When I was at Nashville, I met uh, someone who gave me such good advice. She does all her samplers on 40 or 46 or or higher count. And, and I had started this um, I had started this and part of my perception of why I wasn't so keen on it may have been the color of the linen that I chose. And of course, I can't remember it right now. It's something I had that I thought I'd like to try. But everybody uh, who does 40 count and higher count says do it one thread over um, two. One thread of floss over two count two threads of linen. And I did it. And to me, it just looked anemic. It looked, I thought, oh, this is so puny looking. I did not like it. So uh, someone at the um, Nashville show said, well, try it this way. This is what I do sometimes. So instead of um, the whole cross being one, one thread, one um, thread of the skein, she will do a half cross in two threads. But then when she comes back to cross, she does it in one. So two threads I tried on a little section it, it was too bulky but I actually went back and went over all my stuff with uh, one more thread on half the cross and I am so much happier because it was just fading away and uh, you should be smarter than I am too because I was just stitching happily along on the verse and realized it was not exactly the color they had chosen but I have made myself happy with this color. So you can see this is going to be pretty big even to be um, 40, 40 or 42, 5, 6 count, whatever it is. But I'm enjoying it and I'm going to stitch along on this when I'm kind of tired of my own stuff, which I'm there. <laughs> um, on my own stuff, I have one framed ready to get to the printer and get it all fixed up. I have one ready to frame, which is, well, actually I actually have two ready to frame. And then I'm hoping to have this last one that I'm stitching that I showed you the little sneak peek of, um, also done. So that show is a virtual show. It's called the um, Needlework Expo. It's virtual, it will be the end of August. So I'll be coming to you live from my back bedroom in August that last weekend. And, um, it's, it's a wholesale, wholesale show like Nashville was, and this one I did last year is wholesale, so 
the great thing is um, new releases are promoted so well. People, non-shop non owners, can have a pretty good idea of what's coming out uh, for sale. And then if there's something they really are in love with and would like to stitch, they just let their local uh, needlework shop or online shop say, please order me this, and, and it works for everybody. But um, it's virtual and it's great. I may be in my pajamas when I do it, we'll see. <laughs> it's just uh, three days, the last three days of August, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and people are will, are certainly able to pre-order whatever they want. So you get exposed to a whole lot of new things out there if something really tickles you that you want to stitch. Um, I am continually too drawn to um, stitch other people's things. I've got a, I've got a lot of things that I can start and I've got a lot of things I can finish <laughs> in addition to my own. But I'm kind of on a schedule on my own things. I'm stitching pretty consistently all uh, many hours a day to get that done. And, and I'm happy with how my stuff is turning out. And I have learned a lot. I really have tried these uh, last three designs to kind of control my exuberance with putting so many motifs in a pattern because, you know, space is the final frontier. <laughs> space between the motifs is pretty great too. So I have learned a lot since my very first um, design and pattern that I tried to do. And I'm learning something every time, which is the name of the game. But stitch along with me and uh, I'll try to update each time. I ordered that Memories of the Past, Hands Across the Sea Sampler as a PDF. And um, I, I printed it out and put it in those plastic sleeves that you can put in a notebook. So I've got it in a notebook and I would show it to you if I could find it, but I can't find it right this minute. But that's how I keep up with mine. And a lot of people actually just save the PDF to their phone or their iPad and they can just move around or enlarge or whatever. And, and that's a great way to just carry it along with you without all this bulk of notebooks and all that. But um, uh, charts, well done. You know, hands across the sea samplers are just so amazingly beautiful. And um, this will be my first one of those. Of course, I ordered another one. I may have the other one handy. I think I do. This one. I'm gonna start it too, of course. This one's not gonna take as much as smaller. Don't you love this one, that big pair? So you start it, I'll start it too. Maybe we'll actually finish these things. This is really pretty. Um, I was at the thrift store, I've already found my frame, so can't wait. But first I've gotta finish my own things. But happy summer, I can't believe it's summer finally, you know, this year. Went by a lot faster in a lot of ways. Um, it seems like a lot of things have gotten closer to normal to pre-COVID time. I hope they have. Uh, every time I say that, then there's another, <laughs> I don't know, hot spot somewhere and sets us back. But um, be safe, be, be healthy and be safe. And thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And uh, if I put you to sleep, now would be the time to get your call because I might have put me to sleep. I'm going to have to have some too. <laughs> Thanks everybody, happy summer, bye. Hey, I wasn't very clear. I was watching what I had filmed and I made a couple of boo-boos. When I do the needlepoint, I take a picture of my inspiration and um, print it out on my computer. And then I take the Sharpie and outline, just outline it. So you have kind of like a coloring book page. And then, um, I uh, take a, a transparency, just like, remember math class when your teacher would do all the equations on the transparency for the overhead projector. I, I put that over my uh, print of the photo that's outlined. And so then I just take that Sharpie again and outline 
my outline, if that makes sense. So now on the transparency, I just have a black outline picture. And so I will put that on my printer and blow it up. And then I have to kind of tape it together to make it exactly big enough. But that's, that's my process. I take a picture, I print it, I trace it, and then I um, put the transparency over that printed picture and trace the trace lines, if you can follow that. So now I have a transparency um, with just an outline picture. And then I print that and blow it up. And then it's really easy. You just put that, um, your, your new enlarged picture, put it down. I taped it down on the table. And then I, I centered my um, canvas. I, I ran the center of the, the enlarged picture and then I centered the canvas on that, taped it all down, and then just, you can see it through the, the mesh. So I um, just traced it. And then I had my drawing that I wanted to needlepoint just right there on the canvas. So very easy to do, and you can do it too. And then it was really fun. Um, I just did the tent stitch, which is just a half cross stitch. I looked a lot on the Elizabeth Bradley uh, site. They rec recommend their needlepoints done with something they call a Victorian cross stitch, which is just a cross stitch in the wool. And it doesn't distort the canvas at all. In needlepoint, as you do a lot of tent stitch, sometimes the canvas kind of pulls to a side. It, it loses the squareness of it. So at the end you have to get it back in square you'll have this lopsided thing you're trying to make a pillow out of and that doesn't work but um they recommended on elizabeth bradley this victorian cross stitch and and i tried it and, and the website said it would be bulky it was just tremendously bulky perhaps if i did it i was doing it with four ply um four ply tapestry wool if I did it with the tapestry wool that's more for cruel, you know, thinner with a cross stitch, maybe that would be better. But anyway, you can do all these things too. It's just um, the degree of obsession you get. <laughs> and you can see my degree right here. It's, it's pretty far on the chart. Okay, wanted to clear that up. Thanks, y'all. Bye.